Another method by which a cell can uptake material from the extracellular environment is via process known as endocytosis. Now endocytosis requires energy and it's the process by which the cell membrane invaginates and engulfs the material found outside that cell. Now there are three different processes of endocytosis. We have pinocytosis, phagocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis. Let's begin with the most common type of endocytotic process known as pinocytosis. Now pinocytosis uh, takes place virtually in every single cell and it's the process by which our cell membrane invaginates and engulfs a relatively small quantity of the extracellular fluid. Now pinocytosis is not a specific process meaning it doesn't engulf specific type of molecules. It's basically spontaneous and takes place continuously and for this reason we sometimes refer to pinocytosis as cell drinking because it takes place spontaneously and the end result is the uptake of extracellular fluid. Now, of course, if we have some type of small molecule found in close proximity to our cell membrane, when pinocytosis takes place, it can also engulf those types of small molecules as well as the extracellular fluid. So this is the process by which pinocytosis takes place. So whatever happens to be around the invaginating region on the cell membrane will end up being engulfed into that cell and that cell will form a vesicle. So this vesicle contains a cell membrane that comes from the cell or it contains the membrane that comes from our cell. So basically the reason we have the cell membrane is to protect the actual cell from whatever might be inside that vesicle. That vesicle is then transported into the lysosome. The lysosome fuses with our vesicle and the material inside that cell is basically digested. Now let's move on to a more specific type of endocytotic process known as phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is a much more specific endocytotic process and only certain types of cells can actually undergo this process. So one example is the phagocyte that is the cell found in the immune system of our body. We'll discuss more of the phagocytes when we discuss the immune system. So in this process of phagocytosis, some type of relatively large molecule such as a macromolecule or even a bacteria binds to specific protein receptors found on the cell membrane. Once that protein receptor binds to the receptor on that molecule, let's say our bacteria, the cell recognizes the material, protrudes outward and engulfs that object and once inside that vesicle because it's so large is known as the phagosome. Now once the phagosome is formed and eventually it basically fuses with the lysosome of our body of our cell and once they fuse the lysosome contains special type of hydrolytic enzymes that can basically degrade and digest our material. So let's suppose we have a bacterial cell. The bacterial cell itself contains receptors and these receptors are shown in purple. When these receptors bind to our uh, cell membrane receptors that will signal the process of invagination. So we have the protrusion taking place and that is pushed into our membrane into our cell forming our phagosome. So unlike pinocytosis in which we have 
a random type of process in which it's not specific. This is more specific and it involves these protein receptors found on the cell membrane as well as on that object, in this case our bacterial cell. Now the final type of endocytotic process we're going to discuss is receptor mediated endocytosis. So this is basically the most specific type of endocytotic process and it involves the ingestion of macromolecules such as sugars and and hormones and we also have the binding to our receptor proteins. Now the main difference between phagocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis is in phagocytosis we have the bacterial cell that itself contains receptors that bind to our receptor proteins on the membrane in this case the actual molecule that is being ingested binds directly to the receptors of the cell membrane now, once the binding process takes place, that, uh, that binding basically signals for invagination of the cell membrane to take place. And not only that, it also signals for the formation of a special type of protein layer, protein covering around the vesicle. And the protein inside the covering is called clathrin. So that's exactly why this vesicle, once it's actually formed, is called our clathrin coated vesicle. So the two main difference between phagocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis is in our phagocyte in our not phagocyte in our phagosome we do not have our protein covering but in this case we do have our protein covering now in this case the bacteria basically binds indirectly to the cell membrane it binds through these receptors found on that bacteria but in this case it's the actual molecule being being ingested, being engulfed, that binds directly to the receptors found on our cell membrane. So the main purpose in receptor mediated endocytosis is to ingest the macromolecules that bind directly to our receptor. But in phagocytosis, we have an indirect relationship. So the bacteria doesn't directly bind onto the receptors. The bacteria contains its own receptors that bind to the receptors on the cell membrane. And that is one important difference. The other one is the formation of our protein covering around our vesicle. Now the third difference is the receptor mediated endocytosis process is more specific than our phagocytosis process. So this is least specific and it's most common and almost all cells undergo pinocytosis but receptor mediated endocytosis is much more specific than our pinocytotic process.